Dia, thoughts on potential charges that could come if there is indeed an indictment that follows this target letter? Yes, Anna, as Ken said, uh, it is likely that the charges, I believe, will be obstruction of an official proceeding, which can get you up to 20 years in prison, conspiracy to defraud the United States, which can get you up to five years in prison. There could be some wire fraud relating to the fake electors scheme. There could be charges relating to the fundraising that went on that went into his PAC instead of his legal defense fund. All those things are on the table. And there have been hundreds of rioters who've been charged already with obstruction of an official proceeding. You do not need to be at the Capitol, Anna, to be charged with that. And also one more thing. There was a federal judge, a well-respected one, Judge Carter, who said in open court that it is more likely than not that Donald Trump committed the crimes of obstruction of an official proceeding and conspiracy to defraud the United States. That's powerful. You know prosecutors were listening. So I do expect some very serious charges to come very soon. So when you talk about obstruction of a, an official proceeding, would that have gone back to the comments that he made at the ellipse or postings on social media where he was trying to suggest that um, the election had been stolen? What was the evidence that leads you to believe that that might be a potential pathway that we could see an indictment go? It's all the above. And this is different than seditious conspiracy, which is much tougher to prove. Seditious conspiracy means an agreement with two or more people to commit violence to shut down an official government function. Here, you don't have to prove that Donald Trump had an agreement with others to commit violence. You just have to have a uh, intent for Trump to try to stop the counting of the votes. And there's evidence that he knew his people were going over to the Capitol to help stop it. And that really is all you need for a conspiracy if you have a meeting of the minds. And so that's why they may charge under that statute. I do not expect him to be charged with seditious conspiracy, which is, again, much tougher to prove. Ken, what do you know about the direction of this investigation based on your reporting and talking to sources? Yeah, Anna, to add to what Dave was saying, um, th what essentially the theory of this case appears to be that Donald Trump knew he lost the election, but he allegedly concocted a scheme to advance uh, bogus allegations of fraud in a number of different ways and uh, with an effort to impede the lawful transfer of power and the certification, the counting of those votes on January 6th. So not exclusive to the violence on January 6th, but all the other things that were done, including the fake elector scheme, including the Stop the Steal movement, the fundraising around that. Uh, so it, it requires a proof of intent. It requires them to show that Donald Trump knew or should have known he lost the election. We know there's lots of evidence that he was told that by many of his top aides, but yet continued to perpetrate what prosecutors would call a fraud in a way that tried to move the government, move the levers of power, particularly getting Mike Pence to try to hold up that count and send the electors back to the states on January 6th. So an interesting open question will be whether they connect Donald Trump with any of the violence, but they don't need to do that in order to bring this case. That's the theory of the case. Everybody stay with us. I want I want to add to the conversation former FBI senior official and former U.S. attorney Chuck Rosenberg, who's joining us uh, on the phone right now. Chuck, this news is breaking. What's going through your mind as you assess uh, this potential new charge or potential additional criminal case that the former president could be facing? Well, a couple of things on it. First, I think Ken's analysis is spot on. Second, I've always thought that if you're going to charge a former president, then a former president, but specifically Mr. Trump, it has to be with a crime that is extraordinarily serious and with evidence that is extraordinarily compelling. This is without a doubt an extraordinarily serious crime, the effort to overturn a fair and free election. Now, we still have to wait on it to see what the evidence is. We know from the Mar-a-Lago documents case that the government produced a speaking indictment, meaning a richly detailed um, you know, a narrative of the crimes they were alleging with specific dates and facts and occurrences. And I'm looking forward to seeing that here because I fully expect Mr. Trump to be indicted again. If you receive a target letter, it means you're a likely or putative defendant and you should expect to be charged with a federal crime. And that's precisely what happened here on that.